Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up as I give a quick recap of how to get away with murder. Season 6, episode 14, entitled Annalise Keating is Dead. This one was a trip. Stay tuned, that's all coming up next. It's Bunny. <laughs> Annalise is preparing for trial. She's going over in her head what to wear, how to hold herself. Should she show her arms, skin, what? And we go back to a scene from the previous episode where it left off where Annalise is telling Bonnie the information. And Bonnie's saying, are you sure? Do we know that this information is true? And Annalise is saying, think about it. Why would Frank be allowed to stay after he killed my child if that wasn't his son? He was protecting his son, Bonnie. And Bonnie says, well, why not just tell Frank the truth? And Annalise says that we can't ruin this plan. And my plan is that I need Hannah on my side right now. It's my trial, my plan. And we go back to when Annalise is getting ready in the mirror. And she's thinking, you can do this. We'll make Hannah cave. She had information with the governor and she's trying to hide it so we gotta let them know and she's also thinking about should i wear this wig it's pretty or should i wear my natural hair it's it's raw it's me it's the truth and she's telling herself why do i still have to think about my hair in this situation but it's a note that african-american women are judged based up on their head hair and she says to herself well you know what Take it or leave it, win or lose, I'm going to go in there being me, myself. I'm going to go in natural. Bonnie speaks with Floyd, Hannah's lawyer, and she's explaining that Hannah needs to agree to testify on Annalise's behalf and admit that she's collaborated with the governor and the Castillos because this of this conspiracy theory to destroy Annalise. We see Connor and Oliver, they're trying to pick out things to wear to the trial. And Oliver says, wear blue. Blue looks more sincere. And he keeps reiterating to him that it's only five years. I'll be here when you get out. Just focus on going to the trial, saying what you have to say to get this all over with. And I'm here when you get out. And wow, what if Michaela has a better deal and we don't know it? We then see Michaela and her dad. She's getting ready for the trial as well. And her dad says, what you're wearing looks too strong strong you look like an alpha female she says well I am an alpha female he says no what we need in court is for you to look innocent we need you to wear something softer and he shows her something pink and light and she says wow is this how you became so successful and rich you con and connive people we get to the trial and we see that it is the United States versus Annalise Keating. And the prosecution requests the removal of Tegan Price because it's a conflict of interest and that they have a witness as of last night who is willing to testify about this information. The suspense builds as we want to know who this witness is and we follow this shot of someone working, walking into the courtroom and we see that it is Laurel Castillo. Laurel takes the stand and the prosecution gets to it quickly asking her why did you feel the need to leave Philadelphia so quickly and she explains because her family is dangerous and she needs to testify against them and they already had threatened to take custody of her child and Tegan Price helped me to flee and my family is someone that she represented in the past when I was kidnapped and Tegan says is this supposed to prove that I will lie for the Castillos because Laurel could be lying right now and Annalise has had enough and she says that I agree agreed to the release of Tegan Price representing me I will represent myself and the judge asked the prosecution is this okay and do you agree they say yes and it's final that now Annalise will represent herself 
Tegan is upset and she says, do you realize that you are planning a death trap to yourself because you just fell into that plan that they wanted? They are going to paint you as this egotistical, confident lawyer. And Annalise says, you know, I can't trust anyone at this point and I've got to do things my way when or lose. And of course, Tegan is very worried and wants to help her, but Annalise isn't having it at this point. Bonnie arrives and learns that Laurel is the snitch. And Annalise tells Frank, you know what? We don't have any time to be upset about this. You go find out the deals that those kids made. Bonnie, tell me what's the update on the information that you have. And Bonnie tells her that Hannah will agree to testify, but she needs an NDA. And also she needs proof and confirmation that she won't tell anybody about the child. And if she does, the payoff is $100 million. Nate goes to see Laurel's dad and says that, hey, you need to tell the truth about the governor and understand that the feds themselves will lower your sentence if you do this. And the feds want Annalise more than you do. Testify against the governor and get the governor before she gets to you. The prosecution and Annalise go back and forth. The prosecution wants everybody to know that Annalise Keaton is good. She's she's. Of defended and got off murderers and rapists and she's very condescending at some times but she'll do what she has to do in order to win a case she's brilliant and Annalise says you know I've heard that I'm mean that I'm intimidating that I'm joyless that I'm the b-word I've heard everything but the prosecution says that I'm brilliant and captivating and that's a new one the prosecution says that she finds out that her husband is cheating and gets her loyal students to kill him. Annalise goes on to describe that Wes had a mental illness and he hid that from her. And it's something that she wasn't aware of. And that if she got away with killing so many people and doing so many things, then she is this brilliant mob boss because there's no way she would be able to do all of those killings and get away with it all. She's saying that the people that are conflicting against her and building this case against her are the FBI and these mogul millionaires. Michaela, Connor, and Oliver, they see Laurel but want to know what she's doing there. And Laurel explains that this testimony against Annalise is the same thing that they're doing. And she's doing any and everything to protect her child. She found out that Asher told the FBI that she called her and they pinged her phone in Brooklyn. And of course, they are very upset to learn that she was only an hour away this whole time. She tells them that they want her to testify that she ordered the murder of Sam and all of the information about Wes. And her deal is to get probation. And Connor is upset because she has probation and not years like they did. Michaela gives her testimony and denies that she didn't know that Wes and Sam were fighting until she heard an argument and he pushes him over the rail and Wes hit him over a head, head with the statue once he found out that he wasn't completely deceased and that Annalise wanted him dead and the cherry on the top was that Annalise was sleeping with Wes. We then see Annalise have this look on her face and she's saying in her head, wow, I could have let her rot, all of them rot in jail. But for some reason, I felt like I had to save them. Keep your composure and keep your cool. Annalise proceeds to cross Michaela as the witness. She's asking her, would you ever lie? Would you ever do any and everything to get ahead? And of course, Michaela, she denies that and says, well, no. And she says, so you didn't go above and beyond, not only that I would pick you to be in my class, but also that you would be in the lead and also that you would also shadow me. So what you're saying is that you wouldn't lie and you wouldn't go above and beyond to be on top. But she says, isn't it true that you called ice on a former classmate? And Michaela says, well, no, I wouldn't do that. And Annalise plays the phone call recording of Michaela calling Ice on a former classmate. Annalise tells Bonnie outside of court to make the deal with Hannah. Gabe confronts Michaela 
in the parking garage and he calls her sick and can't believe that everything that's going on in the courtroom is a game and is upset that everything that they had in the past was probably all a lie. And Michaela says, no, everything that I told you, all of my feelings were true. All of this other mess is just terrible and she hates that it's going on. But of course, Gabe doesn't want to hear it. Laurel and Frank talk and he wants to know why he took the deal and he's sad that she took the deal but realizes that she did it to protect her son but he's trying to convince her to stop testifying against Annalise. Bonnie updates Hannah's lawyer to let him know that she'll take the $100 million deal and sign the documentation. As Connor is brought up to testify, Frank tells Annalise more information and Annalise says, Go ahead and tell him. And as Frank is passing Connor as he approaches the stand, he says, Michaela got a better deal. When Connor finally gets to the stand, he's sworn in and he suffers a panic attack. Connor speaks with the FBI and he lets them know that he faked his attack because he wanted to speak with them privately to know if Michaela got a deal. But the FBI says, you got a good deal. Michaela got hers and you have a wonderful deal because your husband is immune to everything that's going on. Connor testifies that Annalise told him to kill Sam and that Annalise just does everything because she knows that he'll lie. Annalise then questions him and says that, is it possible that you're a great liar and that you took the deal because you're gay? And Tegan takes notes of the jury's reaction of that. And Annalise explains that she's not gay bashing because she's bisexual. And then she notices the reaction Tegan and she places it in her notes on possible jurors that may have a problem with that. And Annalise says, you know, you're saying that you would never lie and you did this and you did that. But one thing that I realized that you lied about was saying that you closed this camp that supposedly was to com converge or gay people to being straight. But I looked it up and that camp doesn't exist. There's no such place. The judge ends the cross-examination because Annalise is being very forceful in proving that he's lied about things in the past. Michaela, Oliver, and Connor, they talk. And when Connor tells Frank that she got a better deal, she says that that's a lie and Frank is just trying to get into his head and it's not true. Bonnie updates Annalise that Hannah has a new request and that she'll testify on Annalise's behalf, but she has to say publicly that she killed Sam. And Tegan says, no way, don't lie and don't say that you killed Sam. It's not true. Not only will you have a legacy that's gone, your career, everything you worked for will be gone. So don't do it. And Annalise says, you know what? Hannah is the best witness that I have. And Tegan is just like, no, just say no. What you're saying doesn't make any sense. Anna thinks later at home and she says to herself, what so what if I don't have law anymore? So what if I don't have this and that? At least I'll have freedom. And she's debating with herself back and forth. Then we see Tegan and Bonnie, they're talking over a drink. And Tegan says, we can't let Annalise do this. She can't say yes. She's considering throwing everything away because she's in a panic and she's afraid that she's going to go to jail. And Bonnie says, you're afraid of her going to jail and you're afraid of missing her. And why do you think that she's had me this entire time? And Tegan admits that, yeah, you know, I feel this way, but she makes me feel alive. And we can't allow her to just t tarnish her legacy like that. We then see a scene where Frank is in the parking garage and Laurel is coming up to him and says, hey, you know, I told the guard that I needed to use the rest restroom. And Frank says, good, because he's not alone. Annalise is right by his side. Laurel testifies that you don't say no to Annalise and they always did any and everything that they could for Annalise. We then see the conversation that took place in the garage and Annalise is saying that my life has been hell since you walked into the classroom and I've always done any and everything to protect you and I get you're doing what you're doing to protect your son but remember that he's alive because of me. Frank almost died because Xavier tortured him. 
And Laurel is surprised by that and saying, is this true? And Frank confirms it. Laurel says she's keeping the deal and that she's going to continue to do that because she's protecting her son. She gets back on the stand and as she's speaking, she finally breaks and says that Wes did what he did on his own. He had a mental illness. He killed Sam. I was the one sleeping with Wes, not Annalise, and there's DNA evidence that my son is his son. And I lied because I was coerced to lie. And I thought I was doing what I was doing to protect my son. And I'm sorry, Annalise, that I lied. And we see a big sigh of relief on Annalise's face. But Annalise talks to Bonnie and Tegan in Chambers and says, one testimony won't be two other testimony. Annalise Keating is dead. She agrees to sign the documentation that Hannah agrees to and gives it to Bonnie. Frank tells Bonnie in the garage and wants to tell her, I'm sorry, but I still love Laurel. And we see the pain on Bonnie's face. Michaela and Connor, they confront Laurel, Laurel because she's changed her plans at the stand at the last minute. And Michaela, Michaela finally tells the truth that she did renegotiate her deal with the FBI for pr probation and no jail time. And we see the anxiety on Connor's face. Bonnie drops off a contract to, to Hannah's lawyer. And he says, hey, are you sure that this is okay? And she says, yes, this is the paperwork. And the only thing left is Hannah's signature at this point. Michaela tells Connor that, hey, he can work out the same deal with the FBI, but he isn't believing it. Laurel sees on the news alert on her phone that Xavier is dead. Anna and Tegan also see the news and tells Keegan that, hey, this was Nate. Nate shows Laurel's dad that Xavier is dead. And he didn't kill him because if he did find Xavier, he would be in the FBI's custody telling him everything that he knew about the governor. And Nate says, take the stand and tell the truth. Annalise and Tegan celebrate because a dead Xavier is not a threatening one. But Bonnie comes by to tell her bad news. When Hannah's lawyer went over to sign the paperwork, Hannah was dead and they're ruling it a suicide. And Annalise says, oh my God, it's the governor. Bonnie says, or Frank. And Annalise says, Bonnie, why would Frank kill Hannah? And then we see a scene, the last scene in the parking garage with Frank and Bonnie. And Frank tells Bonnie, I love Laurel, but it's not the same with you. When I'm with you, I can be who I am. There are no lies. It's all me. And Bonnie tells him the news of who his parents are. And that is the end of the episode. Although... We come to that conclusion, but we don't hear those exact words coming from Bonnie's mouth. But we will only know the specifics in the next episode. This episode surely has me flipping in a loop. I have no idea how this will end, how this will conclude. Does Annalise have so much information? And does the ending of this case so dramaful and so dangerous that Annalise has to fake her own death? Let me know. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. And follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, official bun underscore E. In the meantime, check out other wonderful shows and recaps check out those playlists and i will see you next week make sure that you write your predictions in the comments i'll read them and respond be safe you guys i love you so much and until next time take care bye